Good morning, guys. If you want to start getting laptops out for me, that would be awesome. The first thing we're going to do on our computers. And I just emailed uh, Grace this morning. Is this open yet? Yeah. 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 So if you can log into this, or check your email for your Grace update. Cool. All right, so first things first, I finished reading your test yesterday, and I had information if you're interested about retakes. Um, I gave this form to a couple of you. Does anybody else want to retake form? You're being shy, they're over there in the yellow. Um, <laughs> the form. Cool. Um, um, they're in the yellow pocket over there if you want one. Cool. Um, for retakes, there are two standards for this test. Um, standard one and standard two. Um, they both counted, which is a little unusual. Some of the, some of the times, like the last questions, they just repeat stuff and they didn't like count for a grade. These were two separate grades in the grade book. Okay. Um, remember in the grade book, it's complicated. <laughs> the way I put them in there. They're at the top where it says the standard. Actually, my, my lock is it at the bottom. Is that where you guys have the standards? Sorry. I think in two of you at the bottom is where you see all the standards. And you'll see that in there. Those are the ones that are for grading. Okay. But then they're also listed again at the top where it says unit three test numbers one through ten and unit three test numbers eleven to eighteen. Okay. So it's actually in there twice at the top. Where it says the test name, it's not for grading, but they're in the standards as grading. Does that make sense? No. All right, so if you're interested in doing retakes, I'm going to give you guys until the 21st. That's um, about two weeks, two weeks from tomorrow. Um, I recommend if you got below a 70, that you definitely do the retake. If your score was just a little bit lower than normal for you and you want to retake part of it, go for it. Okay. Um, because the, there's two different standards, you can choose to take either one or both. Um, but each one is going to be timed to 45 minutes on the routine. Okay? So you won't have an hour and a half to do just half the test. Okay, 45 minutes each. Which is nice, though, because that means you guys could come in for a stinger to get it done during a stinger. Okay? Um, you know, usually during our stingers, I'm going to want us to do some activities and stuff. But if you want us to come in during a different time, that would be a great use of time. Okay. Um, of course, if you have extended time accommodations, you do, of course, still get that too. Okay. And maybe after school, you get one of that. Um, do your test corrections, do your explanations, um, and then if you need help, come see me. Cool. All the instructions are the same as they've been really good, isn't it? since August. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the back of the checklist has the dates that I'm available for you. Um, I'm pretty much after school all the days between now and then, except for this Friday. No, next Friday the 16th. Okay. Um, but otherwise, I should be after school. Singers, I'm only available to even singers, so there's just a couple days in there that you can come or before school if you want to come in for help. Okay, Matt, questions? Did you get a chance to check your grades, whether logging into SIS or checking your email? I'm curious, in the email, did anyone look at the email? Does the, the standard come at the top or does the standard come at the bottom? Top. Standard to the top, test grade at the bottom? Yeah. But on student view, it's backwards? <coughs> That's just annoying. Like, why couldn't they do it all this? Alright. Anyways. So, to check homework today and for this unit in general, we're going to be a little different than normal. Instead of posting the answers around the room, I'm going to post the answers for today on school week. And the reason I'm doing that is because I really want you to take your time and look carefully at the graphs to check your work. Okay? So if you want to go ahead and hop on the school week, you can. You'll see when I graphed my problems, my answers, I used a highlighter to show like that dab. Remember, dividing line, amplitude, bookend, that like rectangle. I highlighted that rectangle portion, so that's where I really want you to focus your eye. And you have to look at it closely and slowly to make sure that you really are in that same box. 
zero to two pi and up and down and the same shape and those five points are the same, really take your time in checking your work. Okay. Also check the vocabulary, your transformations vocab. The tick marks are really important. They should have all been the same for all of last week's homework. Domain range, period. Check everything carefully as you go through. Okay. I'm going to walk around and sign off for homework. If you were absent or didn't do it or whatever, now it's a great time to be working on it. Okay. Instead of sitting and chilling and doing nothing, you can try it um, today. Okay. Cool beans. If you do finish early, you could also work on that orange study guide. The front back orange study guide. That's also a good use of your time if you don't have any homework to check. Um, a little note, I forgot to mention this in the beginning. But um, you guys did a nice job remembering on the homework to draw two periods. Okay, that was part of the directions. Don't just draw this one highlighted section, but give me a second period. I don't care if you draw that period to the right or the left. Your choice. Um, since this is my answer key, I wanted you to have um, the left side and the right side available to check. Because you could have done the right, your neighbor could have done the left. I wanted both to be in the answer key to, to check. So I have more than two periods, um, and if you draw more than two periods, that's fine. But try to make sure you practice doing that one highlighted section, and then either one more to the right or to the left, your choice. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right. Um, what questions do you guys have from homework? Now that you've had a chance to check. today. Can you please grab some colored pencils, at least one to highlight that dab section. Um, your homework from two days ago, homework 4.0, you can have the back of that out. We're going to be writing on that today. Your pink overview sheet, that was like a sideways one. It looked just like your study guide. Got the dab guy on it. And then the new notes is up front if you didn't grab it yet. All right, guys. So what we're going to be doing today is more graphing of these sine and cosine functions. But what we're going to change today with our transformation is not just A and D, the amplitude and the dividing line. We're going to change the B and the C, okay, and see how that can impact our graph. So if you would take a look at the back of your homework from 4.0. One of the sheets I asked you to get out just a minute ago. The back of homework 4.0 looks like this guy. All right, so on the back of it, you have your ABCD transformation, and we talked last class about what A and D do. What we're going to look at next is what happens to B and C, okay? What does B normally do to our graph? It's a real B. I really hate him. He's really difficult. What does B do to our graph? Stretch or compress horizontally. Yeah, it's your horizontal stretch and compression. And B was evil for many reasons, but partially because he's backwards. Right? Okay, if B was a big number like 2 or 3 or 4, what happens to my graph? Uh, 
compress. It's a horizontal compression. If B is bigger than one, one, two, three, four, it's a horizontal compression. Well, imagine that you have this sine graph and it compresses horizontally. It gets skinnier, yeah? There's a vocab word that is changing when we compress this. Anybody wanna maybe talk to your partners? I think that word could be. What's changing when we do that horizontal compression? Where's that thing? Anybody want to take a guess? Wavelength. A wavelength? Good. What was another word we used for wavelength? Uh, it starts with a P. The period. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to change. So take a look. Here is um, the spot on my corner. Is This is the original sine graph. Yeah. And right now our B value is 1. If I make our B 2, it's going to be a horizontal compression by how much? <coughs> Not by two, by one half. Remember to flip the B? Another reason to hate B, right? You have to flip it. So horizontal compression by one half. Boom. Do you see how the pink line squished together? So now that period is getting smaller. It's repeating the wavelength. The period is repeating more often. You see it? Okay, so you can now see two periods on this graph. Okay. And if we make our B value even bigger, like three or four or four, whoa, I'm compressing horizontally, getting even skinnier, yeah? And when you with me, we're getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. Here is that sign graph now. And you can see, we can see two periods, three periods, four periods in that same section where we used to only be able to see one big slow sine curve. You see it? Okay. That B value changes your period or the wavelength. Okay, how often you repeat. Okay. What the graphs we just looked at were B's that were getting bigger than one. What do you think is going to happen when B is smaller than one? It's going to be a horizontal stretch. A horizontal stretch because B is backwards. So a small number makes it stretch. So if we have a one half B, it's going to be a horizontal stretch by two. It's going to double the wavelength. It's going to double that period. Yeah? So instead of having a graph that happens for sine going from zero to two pi, if I double it and stretch it horizontally by two, Instead of 0 to 2 pi, how far is that graph going to go to? 0 to 4, zero to four pi. See it? Yeah? So let's see, and I go a half. <coughs> this graph doesn't go to 4 pi, but do you see how it's stretching it? And then there would be another piece that goes down here and stretches it all the way out to 4 pi. Yeah? That's what B does. Does that make sense? All right. So let's try on our notes page. B sucks. Um, All right, so B is going to change the period or the wavelength, whichever word you want to use. I usually use the word period, but it's the same thing. It turns out that there is a formula for how it impacts the period. Okay. Um, what is the normal period for sine and cosine? 2 pi. 2 pi. All your homework problems last night were all 0 to 2 pi. The period was 2 pi. The period formula for sine and cosine is 2 pi over v. It starts with that 2 pi, and it actually multiplies it with that 1 over b. That horizontal stretch. 
horizontal stretch or compression by one over your B. You flip your B value, right? That's why this formula has 2 pi on top, because that's the original period, and a B on the bottom from that 1 over B. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is a new formula for us. The period formula is 2 pi over B. Okay. Um, in your homework last night, did you have any B changes? Look at your B. Look at your homework last night. The B. Where would the B be? Where would the B be? Where does the B go in the sine and cosine formula? Inside, like the function. Inside the function, it like multiplies its front with the x inside the sine or cosine, right? So look here in your homework. What's the B value in number one? One. One. It's like a one x in front. Yeah. What's the B value in number two? 1x again. Yes, see, all of these homework problems had a b multiplying with x was just a 1. Yeah? So the period formula, 2 pi over b, what's 2 pi over 1? 2 pi, right? That's why all last night's homework, the period was just 2 pi. Does that make sense? Yeah? B like boy. B like boy. Be the horizontal compression so the the one the one had a B. of one, which meant they didn't change the period. Okay. Well, the period was all two pi for last week's homework. Sorry, I'll try to enunciate better. Okay. Um. Okay. I think that's everything I want to say about B. Yeah. So what about C? C is also a pain in the butt. What do we have to do to C R C? Factor out B. Make sure you have that written down here if you forgot. Factor out B to C or C. We're not going to do a lot of sine and cosine graphs or tangent graphs later that have a B and a C. We're usually going to just do one or the other. It's not very common to have both. Um, but if you had both, you would want to factor out B to C or C. Remember the... If it's x minus c, it goes to the right. x plus c goes to the left. So these guys are backwards, just like b was backwards. Okay. Also, instead of calling it just left and right, the, the right and left number is also now called the phase shift. Okay. c is called the phase shift. New vocabulary for you. C is your phase shift. It's how much it goes right or left. Okay. All right. So this sheet here on the back of your homework is a good thing to have to review back to or refer back to. If you would look at your pink overview sheet. Let's add in some of the information we just talked about. The period, the B value, is going to impact our period. What did the what was the formula I just gave you guys for period? Uh, 2 pi over B. 2 pi over B. Good. That's the formula we're going to use for all sine and cosine graphs <coughs> to find their period. 2 pi over B. Great. Yes? Oh. So we know B changes our period. Here's our period formula, 2 pi over B. And the last thing is your phase shift, okay? The phase shift we're going to find by factoring out B to CRC if we need to, okay? And then, maybe we'll put that, factor out B to CRC. And then if it's X, Plus C, which way does our phase shift go? Left. Left. If it's X minus C, it goes right. And this new vocabulary here, just calling that a phase shift, is the left and right shift, phase shift. Cool beans? All right. 
We're going to try some examples now on our notes page, the like sideways notes page. Make sure you're on the side that says um, number one, because it kind of looks the same on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Take a look to see what sees at number one. Sine of 2x. I know it's a sine graph, but that, notice that 2 inside there is our new thing. Is that an A, B, C, or D? It's a B. Very good. It's multiplying with your X, so it's a B value. Can you guys take a second with your partners to fill in right here in transformations? What's the transformation going to be? How would you describe that? How would you describe that B change? Is it vertical? Is it horizontal? Is it a stretch? Is it a compression? By how much? Compression. One half horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Good. Remember to flip that B. So instead of by two, you do want to flip it. So this is a horizontal compression by one half. Any other transformations? Nope, that's all we got. All right, so to graph it, we're going to do the dab process, just like we did before. The D of dab stood for dividing line. Where's our dividing line? Zero. Good. It's the D value at the end here. The dividing line is zero. Put that guideline on your picture. Stay with me, guys. <coughs> What's our A, our amplitude, is that word? What's our A value here? One. Yeah, up one and down one. In my picture, some of you, most of you did it in home, but some of you are already shying away from it. Don't be afraid of doing these guidelines. They really help your eye see where the center of your sign graph is going to be and where the bottom and top of your sign graph is going to be. Up one and down one from that divide line. Remember that the axis on that y axis counts by half. And it counts by half, so you gotta go up two boxes and down two boxes. Alright, next up, the B. What did B stand for? The bookends. Yeah, and the we've learned that the B impacts the period. True, true. This B stands for bookends. The bookends for sine and cosine always start between what two original numbers? Zero and two pi. Zero and two pi. So you're going to set up zero to two pi. This is new and different from last night's homework. This has an extra step from what we did last time. Cool. So zero to two pi. Set up that inequality. Compound inequality. We're going to put something in the middle. Do you remember what went in the middle? It's the Bx minus C stuff. It's whatever's inside sine and cosine. Last night's homework, there wasn't a B. There wasn't a C. It was always just an X inside sine and cosine. Just put an X in the middle. But this time, it's different. What's in the middle? 2X. Can you put a 2X in the middle there? You with me so far? See where that 2x came from? Alright. What we're going to do now is we're going to solve this compound inequality. And everybody had a different algebra 2 teacher, and everyone really had a different algebra 1 teacher. Bless you. So I'm not sure exactly if you've seen, all of you have seen this type of equation. Okay? When we have an, an equation with like an equal sign, we have a left side and a right side, right? If we're trying to solve like 
x, 3x equals 15. Yeah? What do we do to both sides to solve it? Divide by, Divide by 3. Look at you, Smarty. Yeah? Cool? We're doing the same thing here, but instead of an equal sign, it's going to be an inequality sign. Step one. Good. And there's actually a third side. There's another side over here that we have to solve for. Let's say that number is six. Is it okay to just divide the two other sides by three? No. What do you think I'm going to have to do that six as well? Divide it by three and get another new number over there. Mm -hmm. Cool? This is called a compound inequality and and compound inequality. Remember ands and ors? Yeah, maybe. Like inequality and absolute value for a lot of them. Okay. The x is in the middle, and it's like three sides. One side, two sides, three sides. You divide all three sides. That make sense? <laughs> Alright. So, one side, two side, three sides. What are we going to do to solve for x? Who's bothering the x? Two. The two. So what am I going to do to get rid of it? Do I subtract it? You're going to divide by it. Good, because it's multiplying right now. So we divide by two to all three sides. Yeah. Okay. Zero. Divide by anything. Please get that right. Zero divided by anything is? Zero. Zero. What's 2x divided by 2? Just x. I'm just bringing down those inequality signs in the middle. And what's 2 pi divided by 2? 1 pi. Before we even get to the graph, how do you feel about 0 to pi, what we did there in solving? Yeah, we're just dividing all three sides by the 2 to get x by its well, All right, so now what that means for our graph. Our sine graph has how many points? Five points. Remember those five tick marks? Yeah. In all your homework, they went from 0 to 2 pi last night. This problem... Those five points are going to go from zero to pi. Our period, our graph is having a horizontal compression by a half. It's shrinking and getting skinnier. We're going to put the whole sine graph in this tiny little box. Does that make sense? Okay, so draw those bookends on for me, zero to pi. And then I want us to figure out our tick mark. We're starting at zero and ending at pi. How many tick marks go in between those guys? Five. Okay. Five total. If we're starting and ending at zero and pi, how many are in the middle? Three. Just three. So we have to figure out the three tick marks. The three x values that go with our points. Okay. To find those points, I look at the graph. For me, it's very visual. Do you, you remember what's going to be right in the middle here, right between 0 and pi? Who would be right in the middle there? A half of pi, pi over 2. Make sure you have these tick marks down. It's not just about the final graph. The details matter. And that pi over 2 tick mark. Then we're going to find the middle of these two, between 0 and a half of pi. Visually, it looks like it'd be right there. Do you guys agree? Yeah, right between 0 and a half of pi, that first line there. What is that number? One fourth pi. Remember, in these graphs, those x values, those x boxes, the scale of the x axis, count pi. One fourth pi. It counts by a pi over four. All right, so that'd be one fourth. This next guy we said was a half, which is really two fourths, right? Two fourths reduces to a half. What would this next line be? That next tick mark? Three fourths. Because it's one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Do you see it? Okay. 
So our first point goes on the dividing line. That first tick mark at the beginning of the box, on the dividing line. And normally sign goes up first or down first? Up first. Is this sign still positive? Yeah, it was a positive A value. So it's still the next point is going to go up to the top of the box, lining up with that pi over 4 tick mark to go to the top of the box. Where's your next point going to go? On um, the dividing line. Take a second to check your graph carefully compared to my blue points, please. If you feel good with those five points, you might want to, well, obviously draw your curve, but also highlight it. Yeah? That'll help your eyes when you're checking homework, notes, studying, whatever. If you highlight it, it'll stand out more clearly to you. Okay, that one box. That one period. That's the most important period. Cool. How many periods do I ask you to draw? Two. So now, if you haven't already, you need to repeat that pattern and draw a second period. Do I care if it goes left or right? Doesn't matter, you're playing. <laughs> Here's a second period to the right, if you drew that way. Here's a second period to the left, if you drew this way. Okay. Um, Ahmed asked a really good question. If you're drawing it to the left, is it the same, or do you like reflect it? Do you flip it somehow, right? And this, you want to picture that shape here, this sign shape, it's going to repeat. It's like it slides right over. Cool? So if I read this graph from right to left, which is not the way we normally read, but from right to left, it goes down and then up, right? Slide it over, it goes down and then up. Slide it over, it goes down and then up. Cool beans? 
All right. Um, let's fill in these last couple blanks. What's our domain? Negative to infinity. Beautiful. All real numbers. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Good. Parentheses on infinities. Range? So bracket negative one, positive one bracket. Beautiful. Do we agree on the brackets? Sine and cosine always have brackets because they're always going to include those top and bottom points. They hit them closer most. The period here. What is the period? It's pi. It's no longer 2 pi. What's the formula for period? 2 pi over B. 2 pi over B. And what is our B value this time? 2. The B value in the equation was a 2. Not the 1 half when we flipped to the B, but just a 2. Cool. So our final period is? You just cancel out your period. Okay. I recommend Jacob and Emily before you go on to the next problem, like look at the overview picture of everything you just wrote down. Like synthesize it. Make sure it all makes sense. Okay. We said that there was a horizontal compression by a half. That's going to change our sine graph like this and squish it together. Yeah. It's going to change the bookend. Did the bookends change? Were they 0 to 2 pi? Or did they change? They changed. They were 0 to pi. That changed. Yeah? Did we draw that change in our picture? Yeah? Did we draw that in our picture? Yeah? The period is pi. Is that what the picture looks like? Yes. That every pi, the graph repeats itself? Make sure that you look and see that everything you wrote down actually makes sense in your picture. Okay? Um, you can also do one final check for your period, um, both visually in your picture and in your equations. The period, remember, is this section that we highlighted. It's how far it is from pi to zero, from the end to the beginning, right? From start to end. Yeah? You can check your period by subtracting your bookends. You can check your period by subtracting your bookends. So this guy ended at pi, subtract his start was zero. What is pi minus zero? And that should match this period over here. It should match your picture. It should match what you subtract when you get those bookends. Okay, you can check your period by subtracting your bookends. Because right? the bookends are telling you where to start and end your graph. So if you subtract them, that should be the period. Okay, Matt? All right. Let's do another one. Is it a sign? No. Cosine. Ooh, cosine. How exciting. Yes? What kind of transformation does this cosine have? Uh, C. It's got a C value. This is our first C value, isn't it? Is there a B that we need to factor out to see our C? No. No. What's our C value? Or Sorry, let me ask that differently. What's our transformation? How is this changing? To the left. How three much? 3 pi over 4. Perfect. Left 3 pi over 4. We could call that the phase shift if you wanted to use that word. Phase shift left 3 pi over 4. Well, that'll give me just a minute, okay? Any other transformations? All right, let's go through our tab then. <laughs> Dividing line is at? Zero. Draw it in. Amplitude is at? One. Up one and down one. Remember that's two boxes from your dividing line. Up one and down one. <coughs> Yeah. 
comes the real fun. The book ends is what changes stuff. Boom. Where your book ends. You can always start with your original sign and cosign between zero and two pi. That's what you always use to set up the inequality. Kudos to those of you who are a little bit ahead and already have that set up. It looks really good. Zero to two pi. What am I going to put in the middle? X plus three pi. Good. You're going to take that entire parenthesis, the BX minus C part. All of that goes inside. Everyone all right? We're now going to take this equation and solve for... X. X. And you always solve for the variable, right? Not the pi, but the X. Cool. And how many sides are there? Not just two. There's three sides now. Just like we had. Did I solve that? Yes. Just like our three sides here when we had highlighted, right? This guy also has three sides. One, two, three. This is a really big middle side. Yeah? Cool. What do I need to do to isolate, to get x by itself? Subtract the 3 pi over 4. Do we agree with the concept? How many times are we going to do it? On how many sides? All three sides. Write it out first. We'll get to the math in a minute. We're subtracting 3 pi over 4 on all three sides because we want to get x by himself. Is making sense? Yeah. First mm -hmm. one's easy. You're going to talk to your partners. What are you going to get on the left side there? Subtract on the left side. What are we going to get? What is 0 minus 3 pi over 4? Negative 3 pi over 4. Beautiful. X is now by himself in the middle. We're almost done. The hardest one is the right side. With your partners, what do you guys need to do to subtract with fractions? Common denominator. There it is for the win. Common denominator. Discuss. You need to turn 2 pi into some amount of fourths and subtract it with 3 fourths. What are we getting for that right side? What are we getting for that right side? What is 2 pi minus 3 fourths? 5 pi over 4. Good. You want to turn that 2 pi into how many fourths? 8 fourths. Gives you 5 pi over 4. How are we feeling? You feel okay with that math? That subtraction? Yeah. All right. Let's talk about where that goes in the graph. Because we haven't dealt with any ones that are negative 3 pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4 yet. Those are crazy. All right. Can we put the phone on? What we want to do in the picture is remember that the x scale counts by how much? Fourth pi. So we want to go negative three fourths. Let's count with me. This is negative one fourth, negative two fourths, negative three fourths should be right there. You see where I'm looking? I'm just counting three to blocks to the left because each one's a fourth. And I want negative three pi over four. But that line there, so you can see where your rectangle, your dab box is going to start. Cool. 
The other side we got to find is 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4. Can you count it? It should be 5 fourths. Count it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boxes. 5 fourths. Perfect. Find that right side. Starting at the origin, this would be 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths. Is this where you guys landed? Yeah. All right. Then let's fill in our tick marks. Figuring out your tick marks. This is very detailed. I'm sorry that it's a lot. Yeah. We want to figure out visually. Count to the middle. Count to the middle and find that middle spot. Do you agree that it's here? Find that middle spot in your finger. What do you think that middle tick mark number is going to be? Pi over 4. Pi over 4. Remember, each box is a pi over 4, and it's on the very first box. So that middle tick mark is pi over 4. Does that make sense? Make sense? Can you find the middle of these two in the bottom half? between negative three-fourths and positive one-fourth, count to the middle. Where is that middle tick mark and what would his value be? this guy here. Do you guys agree? Yeah? Melvin, what would you put for that value for his tip mark? What is that number? Good. And our last one, again, count to the middle. How do you want to do this one for me? You got it? Three pi over four. Do you guys agree? Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. We gotta stop the chatter. I'm not gonna see. Well, you feel good? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Once you've got all those details, now it's easy peasy. Now you're drawing sine or cosine? Cosine. Cosine. Remember my kid years ago? I don't. What does cosine look like? I don't know. Shrugged at me, right? That picture stuck with me so much. That's what cosine looks like, yeah? Cosine normally starts up above your dividing line. Is this guy a positive cosine? No? Positive in front. So it's going to start up above in that uh, top left corner on that first tick mark at negative pi, uh, 3 pi over 4. At your next tick mark, you're back on the dividing line. Uh, 
What 
what changes, what vocab word changes when we change, ooh, yeah. Um, when we have a horizontal stretch. Period. The period, yes, the period should be changing. And it's stretching, it's getting bigger. As we look at doing the bookend, um, what are we going to put inside the middle here? It was inside to find our bookends between zero and two pi. Pi over two. I mean x over two. X over two coordinates. It's that entire thing. Why doesn't the minus one come with it? It's not in the parentheses. It's not part of the bx minus c. Well, just the x over two. Now this is a confusing. This can be complicated for people. Some people like to write it as one half x, that's also fine, okay? Bottom line is, I gotta get x by itself. How do I get rid of that one half? Or how do I get rid of dividing by two? Multiply by two. Multiply by two. Think keep change flip. To get rid of that one half, you're gonna keep change flip. Divide it by a half, multiply by the reciprocal, 
multiply both sides by two, or all three sides by two over one. Cool. What's zero times any other number? Zero. Zero. This just cancels out the two, gets x by itself. And what is two pi times two over one? Four pi. Four pi. So your um, bookends should be going from zero to four pi. Stop and think, does that make sense? Yep. There's a horizontal stretch by two, though it's supposed to get wider by doubling. Does that make sense, that it goes all the way to four pi? It does. Okay. Do your tick marks. They're nice, pretty numbers. Who's right in the middle between four pi and zero? Two pi. And the bottom middle tick mark between zero and two pi would be? Pi. And between two pi and four pi? Three. Four. Alright. Drawing my graph, it's a cosine. Did it reflect? Um, what? Did it reflect? Oh, I think right. Oh, no, no, it did not reflect. It did not reflect. Good. So it should still start up in that top left hand corner box. Your next point doesn't happen until pi on the dividing line. At 2 pi, you're at the bottom of your box. 3 pi back to the dividing line. 4 pi back to the corner. See it? Yeah. And do a second period over here just to repeat the pattern. Highlight. Let's go through vocab. You know a lot of you are ahead of me. Domain, I'm not even going to ask because I know you know. <laughs> Range is negative 2 to 0, parentheses or brackets. Can you say 0 to negative 2? No. All right. The period. In the formula, it is 2 pi over b. What is our b value? 1 half. 1 half. 2 pi over 1 half. How do you divide fractions? Change flip. Change flip. Our period is? Four pi. Good. Why else, according to our picture, or maybe related to our bookend, why else is the period four pi? Because if you subtract the bookends, it's still four pi. Exactly. Big minus small, the period is still four pi. Let's see. Okay. Um, I'm going to, because I know a lot of you did number four, I'm going to show my work up here so you can see it. Um, and then I'll put homework here so you guys can grab while I'm writing. Well, I also put the retake checklist here. Anybody want to grab the retake form? Cool. Let's see how quickly I can do that.